Texas for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. All part of Capital One Bowl Mania. An old Big 12 matchup. They haven't met in eight seasons, Oklahoma State and Texas A&M, these two charter members of the conference. Now Big 12 versus SEC, deep in the heart of Texas. Kevin Brown of the former Houston Cougar and Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware, Alyssa Lang, will join us shortly. This is one of the best matchups of bowl season, period. Two teams that were charter members of the Big 12 and we have the leading rusher in the nation. It's not J.K. Dobbins. It's not Jonathan yeah. Taylor. It's the Canadian Cowboy, Chuba Hubbard. Yeah, and a guy with tremendous vision and explosiveness in his game. As you mentioned, not a lot of fans know about this young man. They're going to get to know him tonight because he's going to carry the load in a big part of it for Oklahoma State. What do you get from Chuba Hubbard? You get the great vision. He can hit fine holes, and all he needs is a little bit of a crease. He's going to turn big plays out for this offense. Then shows you the toughness between between the tackles against Oklahoma, their final game, breaking three tackles here to get himself in the end zone. What is he known for? Breakaway speed. Shows it certainly on this play, opening the second half against Kansas State. Give him a little crease, Kevin, and forget about it. Nobody is going to track down Tuba Hubbard. He needs just 64 yards, which he got on that play, by the way, to become the second Cowboy ever to get 2,000 rushing yards in a single season. Oh, by the way, Barry Sanders was the other one. Good day today, and Chuba Hubbard could move up into the top 20 for single-season rushing yards in FBS history. His team will start in defense, however. Oklahoma State won the toss and deferred. I have to wait just a little while to see Chuba Hubbard, but Texas A&M, they've got some weapons on offense that we will get into right after this kick. Great crowd in Houston. Two teams that are relatively local. And here we go in the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. Anaya Smith, the terrific freshman, runs it back for Texas A&M and is taken down near the 23. The Texas A&M Aggies in their second year under Jimbo Fisher, 7-5, and 4-4 four and four in the SEC, finishing fourth in the SEC West. They were 0-5 against teams ranked in the top eight, including three number ones. They are a very young team led by a junior, Kellen Mond, and they're going to a bowl for the 11th consecutive season and second in a row under Jimbo Fisher. I'm not sure that anybody in recent memory has faced the type of schedule that the Aggies face this season. And I'm talking about you know, in the likes of Clemson early, Alabama. Those are teams that really so physical, they can change the outcome of your season after you face them and then mix in Georgia and certainly LSU to round out that regular season schedule. First team in history to play three AP number ones in one season. They play college football playoff number 25 here. And start with a short pass to Courtney Davis as we toss it down to the third member of our crew, Alyssa Lang. Alyssa. Yeah. Guys, as Texas A&M gets the ball first on offense, one thing you'll notice, their run game looks a little bit different than it has all season long, down to just one scholarship running back with Isaiah Spiller. They've been dealing with some injury. They're leading rusher into the season, Jay Sean Corbin, going into the transfer portal. So you'll see Spiller take the majority of the carries today. And a big story there, Cordarian Richardson, Alyssa, the last name on that. Not suspended, but we're told he did not travel with the team, so he is not available today. Connor Blumrick, a converted quarterback, is the backup at that position. Ma, that a quarterback keeper, gets blasted from behind, and the ball is out. On the second play of the game, it's an Oklahoma State takeaway. And one of the things that Jimbo Fisher shared with us this week that could not happen is turning the ball over. Ball security was at a premium, and this is a designed quarterback draw with Kellen Mond. Doesn't see the defender coming from behind. I think it's Trace Ford that, that actually knocks the football out. And it's going to set up Oklahoma in some pretty good field position. Oklahoma State had not collected a takeaway in either of its last two games. Yeah, I like here, Kevin, when you have a, a sudden change like that, and especially this end of the field, don't be surprised if Mike Gundy doesn't go up top and try to capitalize right away. 
And he will do so with Drew Brown, the fifth-year senior, making his third consecutive start. And Brown, a little pop pass to Dylan Stoner. And a and starts strong defensively, a loss of five. Damani Richardson yeah. blows up the play. Outstanding true freshman at 63 tackles on the season. Has started every game this year, and they just love and rave about him. His size at six foot one, 210, just a playmaker. Brown will throw it up top for the first time. Single coverage and incomplete. Jordan McRae was the intended target for Drew Brown. So Spencer Sanders is available again. He healed pretty quickly from a thumb injury, and Mike Gundy told us he has specific packages for Sanders, but we expect Brown to be the quarterback for the bulk of the game. He is the quarterback in the third and 15. Brown under pressure, and down he goes. Wow. Looks like he... Got knocked down by the back of one of his own offensive linemen, yeah. and Tyree Johnson blew up the play. Yeah, it was Tyree Johnson just took a lineman and shoved him right into the quarterback. You talk about an aggressive pass rusher and coming off the edge, getting to Drew Brown. Tyree Johnson, the sophomore, showing up big for Texas A&M. <laughs> He puts the left tackle Dylan Galloway right into Brown. My goodness. I so, mean, all they did was go backwards. Yeah. They had to recover a fumble, and AM's defense really started to show what they're made of. This is a 53-yard try for Lansdale, Pennsylvania's Matt Amendola. It is no good. A takeaway for Oklahoma State leads to nothing. No score after two possessions here in Houston. <laughs> Missed field goal by Matt Amendola, and Texas A&M actually moved up in terms of field position after the turnover. No score early on in the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. Keys to the game tonight brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Yeah, for Texas A&M, ball security. They want to establish the line of scrimmage, stop Chuba Hubbard, then Oklahoma State. They've got to beat man-to-man -man if they're going to have any type of success against this Aggie defense. And you'll see a lot of it. Second possession for Texas A&M. It's Anaya Smith. Could see him heavily involved in the run game, the true freshman with the lack of depth at running back. Time for tonight's impact players. They are brought to you by Lexus. And for Texas A&M, obviously, their leading receiver, Jamon Osborne, who can certainly make some plays down the field. The true freshman, Jalen Watermeyer, who has been fantastic, a future first-round pick. Malcolm Rodriguez is a tackling machine, and their best cover man on the back end, A.J. Green. Love his, uh, his work this year. On a second down, Isaiah Spiller with some maneuvering across midfield and a true freshman takes it into oklahoma state territory first down and a gain of seven and a lot of young talent running behind kenyon green the right guard carson green the right tackle and then jalen watermeyer on that side of the formation as well to provide a nice spark in the running game which they're going to need against this oklahoma state front seven been an up and down offensive line for Texas A&M this year. Anaya Smith, the running back behind him, as Spiller leaves the game on a first and ten. Mond to Smith out of the backfield, and Anaya Smith with a short pickup. You mentioned the youth on that last play, Andre. It yeah. is a team filled with youth. Only four seniors. On this roster, fewest in the nation for Texas A&M, Monda Jr. is one of the leaders of a very young offense. Yeah, and a lot of youth, Kevin, on the offensive line. Only one senior in Colton Prater, the, the center. So there is a lot of growing up, and, and you've we talked about it at the top, the schedule, and a lot of young players having to face that type of competition early. It only help going forward. True freshman Isaiah Spiller back of the game at running back. On a second down, Spiller flips it. It's Courtney Davis. And Davis has a short pickup. Fairly well covered up by Oklahoma State. It's a gain of four. They like the ball in his hands. Very t it was it was hampered by injuries his first couple of years in the program, but now finally healthy. Big physical receiver at six foot two, 200 pounds. 
Now a junior and as I mentioned healthy and certainly turned in a nice year with 48 catches over 500 yards to go along with those catches. Got the flip from Smith for the gain of four. And a third and four coming up for AM. Big down here for Texas AM to keep this drive going. Mon with plenty of time. Incomplete over the middle. The tight end, Weidermeyer, the intended target. What do you do here on fourth and four? I think anytime you cross the 50 in college football, you're certainly not in field goal range. Little Fisher's going to go ahead and punt the football, but it, it's dealer's choice in, in terms of if you get anything. In that situation, with it being third and medium, hey, you're thinking about going for it on fourth down. But here, you're going to take the conservative approach, maybe try to change field position and pin Oklahoma State back. Now, they have maybe the best punter in the country, and that's the native Braden that, Matt. That's why, because he's a weapon. Averaging a cool 47.7 per punt. Wow. How good is that? That's pretty good. That's as good as it gets. 40 on the kick. Down inside the five. Braden Mann might be putting in this stadium on Sundays sometime soon. What a kick. Appropriate headgear for some of the Aggies and Cowboys. The Spirit Walk into NRG Stadium earlier tonight. The 14th annual Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. What a fantastic crowd we have on site here in Houston. Juba Hubbard did not touch the ball in the first series. Oklahoma State went negative 11 yards on those three plays. Don't need a calculus degree to know. That's not good. We'll see if Chuba, the nation's leading rusher, gets his first touch here. Indeed, he does. And he creates some space out across the five for a gain of five. Boy, and that shows you how special he is. He got a nine-man front for Texas A&M. Only two receivers, everybody else in the box. And he turns it into a positive game. Oklahoma State 16th in the nation as a team in rush yards per game. Hubbard leads the nation over 161 per game. Drew Brown will give it to him again. And there goes Chuba Hubbard. His first big run of the day. He's got Olympic sprint speed, and Devion Renfro finally runs him out of bounds after a gain of 37. Well, Devion Renfro's showing you that he's got a little bit as well at an angle, and, and usually it's eaten up by Tuba Hubbard, but he's able to close and get Hubbard out of bounds. This young man is special. A lot of the nation's going to find out about Tuba Hubbard this evening. He made Leon O'Neill miss early. L.D. Brown in the backfield as Hubbard gets a blow, and Brown slips for a loss of two. They really like L.D. Brown. He's going to factor in a lot next season, a lot along with Desmond Jackson, two younger backs that Mike Gundy really likes. Maybe to limit the carries of Chuba Hubbard, he returns to Oklahoma State. Richard sophomore could be his final game. No decision yet made publicly. Here's a little flip from Drew Brown to L.D. We're told by Mike Gundy and the Oklahoma State folks he might be as fast as Chuba Hubbard, and he shows it off for a gain of 14. Yeah, it's terrific speed and explosion. He shows you that on film. He is a good short yardage runner as well. Is in the in the red zone. You'll see him a lot. It was positively Farvian of Drew Brown. Improvisation leads to a first down. Now a quick throw to catch Braden Johnson. And Braden Johnson is gone. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Mix up in the secondary, Miles Jones and one of the safeties collide. It created space for Braden Johnson, their speedster, and the team's deep threat. And when you give him a little bit of, of space and a little bit of light, he can certainly, he's got sprinter speed along with Chuba Hubbard and L.D. Brown. So after a brilliant punt from Braden Mann, pinned Oklahoma State at the three, the Cowboys go 97 yards in a flash. And they lead it seven to nothing. They race at practice sometimes. Hubbard and Brown and Johnson, they are different winners almost every time. We'd take any one of them after this drive.
Longest drive in the short history of the Texas Bowl, 97 yards on five plays. Braden Johnson caps it off with a 42-yard catch and run from Drew Brown at 7 to nothing Cowboys. There are three fastest players on offense. Chuba Hubbard. All three touched the ball on Obi that drive. And, and Bray and, Johnson. And created some big gashing plays. Anaya Smith will run it back from his own goal line. And Smith, who has pretty good speed himself, is stuck at the 20. Let's take a look back at that last touchdown in our visit Houston playbook yeah they're trying to start the the play in quarters where they're showing a quarters look going to rotate down to three deep zone and Damani Richardson as he's coming up to make this play slips it becomes a natural pick where he takes out his own man Miles Jones it turns into just a foot race by Braden Johnson and as you mentioned nobody going to catch him. Is that just pre-snap experience? Well, it, it basically two guys in the same area and they just pick one another up. It happens. Unfortunately, it happened against a team with electric speed. And now here's Spiller on the carry to first down. A strong answer to start the drive for Texas A&M. Tanner McAllister got him down. And Carson Green, the right tackle with an excellent block to free the true freshman Spiller up. And then Watermeyer pulling around as well. Boy, he developed into a, an outstanding talent. Two true freshmen getting it done all season on offense for Texas A&M. Well, you don't panic here, Kevin. You know, down 7 nothing. staying with a game plan, and get Kellen Mond going. Mond will hand it off again, and a crease for Spiller. And a first down run of about seven. And I like the approach that Jimbo Fisher has taken. It's not panic. Let's get the offensive line involved. Our big tight end, who's becoming an excellent blocker, and then our best threat to run the football in Isaiah Spiller. If they can get into that second level today, as they've done on these last two runs, they're facing a depleted Oklahoma State back end. No Colby Harvell Peel, the all Big 12 safety. And no Trey Sterling for the first half after targeting last week. Well, you know, if it's not broken, hey, let's not try to fix it. Yeah, you know, let's stay with the running game. It's the, the fastest way to incorporate an offensive line into a game. Those big guys up front, they want to come off the football, fire off, and let, just let them play. And they're moving and changing the line of scrimmage is, is what. Jimbo Fisher told us they needed to establish the line of scrimmage in this especially early in this game on this drive they're doing exactly that two tight ends set on this first down after a run of four from Spiller Mod will look to throw deep this time challenge those Oklahoma State safeties and a flag is thrown with a whole lot of contact on the back end Kendrick Rogers was deep the coverage from the corner Rodarius Williams in what looks to be pass interference. Rogers is a load to handle because of the size and the speed and Williams looked like he was in pretty good position. He's got a right to the football as well. Pass interference. I maybe Defense. that would be a no call. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Big Ten crew, Mark Lazinski has a yes call. Pass interference in 15. How about the response by Texas A&M? You get hit for a touchdown pass, a long drive. Your defense just gave up. Let's play some complimentary football and go out and move the ball down the field. You need a score. You're not... It, it, maybe not getting into the end zone, but you need a threat to at least kick a field goal on this drive as a response. This is a nice start for Jimbo Fisher and his group. Back on the ground on first down and no gain for Isaiah Spiller. Second year for Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M, nine and four in year one, seven and five here in year two. He, told us throughout the week the good news I don't think we missed on one freshman in this class but these players still need to understand how to prepare and how to prepare consistently and 
that is his biggest hope yeah. for his program going forward. One win away from career win 100. The man can coach football. That's why he's in in College Station. He knows how to build programs and a couple of outstanding recruiting classes. Mm. Another one on the way. Can they get old and stay there in the next couple of years? A question. Courtney Davis. Down goes Davis on a tackle by Amen Ogbon Bamiga. Rodarius Williams in as well to set up third down. Yeah, and you're in a situation here where, again, four down territory. You do it, get something on third down. Wouldn't surprise me if they turn around and give it to Spiller. And the way he's been effective is not running laterally, it's coming right downhill at an offensive line that is getting some tremendous push on this drive. Could well be four down territory for Texas A&M. Here comes a blitz and it's blown up. Well read as Bond tried to deliver it to Spiller and a loss on the play. A.J. Green the three year starter got in there. That kind of a surprising call because they've run the ball so well on this drive with Spiller coming downhill the offensive line really getting its footing and then you run that one and allow a guy like A.J. Green he's not going to miss many tackles 2019 Jim Thorpe Award semifinalist a great player out and out at that corner spot for Oklahoma State he's not going to miss a tackle like that. And A&M's going to punt it from Oklahoma State territory for the second straight drive from the 40 of Oklahoma State. Braden Mann will take a delay of game to give himself a little more space. I've always, I would always decline these if I'm a head coach on the other side because that's exactly what he's why he's taking the delay of game penalty. Delay of game. Go ahead and force him to Offense. punt it from an uncomfortable Penalties spot. Decline. Fourth down. Well, Mike Gundy was listening to you. Braden Mann's backing up, as is his <laughs> offense. Did they hear it? <laughs> They're not going anywhere, fellas. It was declined? Guys, you got to go back. You have to go back. I thought it. No, no, you don't. Surprising. I thought he declined it. This kid is outstanding, though. Outstanding. His average has gone down to 48 a punt because he has worked on this precise punting. He hit the ground at the end there, but there's no penalty. This one not quite as good as the first one. Out of bounds, marked at up to 17. Up to 27 yards. Let's get to know Chuba Hubbard. He's known as the Canadian Cowboy. He comes from Edmonton, the province of Alberta, where he had dreams of making the Canadian Olympic team ran a 10 5 500 meter at age 15 high school football averaged a measly 15 yards per carry in Canada and he was quickly discovered Alabama was on him Texas A&M Oregon and many others but Oklahoma State and Marcus Arroyo got to him early and Chuba Hubbard is here in Stillwater for maybe just maybe his final game on first down Hubbard touches it for the third time and a solid pickup and some late flags come in with some post play action. Looks like two, two guys got, got to know each other way away from the ball. I mean, it was on the back side of the play where the flag came from. Let's see how they iron this out. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 29. 15 yard penalty automatic first down this is number 29's first on sportsman like of the game that's the junior Debian Renfro second year starter who's in for the injured Elijah blades he was just at the tail end and he's down on a knee and gets up and takes a, a shot at Logan Carter the tight end might have been watching a little too much Pitt Eastern Michigan last <laughs> night <laughs> Hubbard on first down Another strong run for Chuba Hubbard ahead to the 44 for a gain of six. Our PlayStation player impact rating, it's an 86 for Chuba Hubbard, highest among Big 12 running backs, the nation's leader in rushing yards, and among the nation's leaders in rushing touchdowns with 21. Hubbard will touch it again on a second down. Get outside, there's a flag thrown from the backfield. This looks to be coming back. 
There's an injured AM and player down as well, right near the line of scrimmage. Holding. Offense number 76. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's to Marvin Leal, the freshman defensive end. For an injury. And the hold is on Dylan Galloway, who's having a rough go of it here early. Mm -hmm. Texas A&M without Justin Matabike, their best defensive lineman who declared for the draft early. They need a little more from some other players. Leal expected to be one of them as he's being tended to on the Houston turf. Yeah, he along with Jaden Peavy who started this game for Texas A&M in the absence. Matabike. See here how he gets maybe rolled up on by one of the Oklahoma State players. So Leal, the true freshman, gets some work done. Again, he has to step up for somebody does or somebody's without Justin Matabike. This is the Texas A&M defense with and without him a fairly stark difference in conference play sitting out this game to prepare for the draft he is expected to be a high pick our own Mel Kuyper as him as his number four draft eligible defensive tackle and Leo can play both inside and out so they're going to need him his versatility inside and out throughout the game so hopefully he'll be able to get himself reinserted into this game. After the holding second and 14 Brown to throw for the first time since the touchdown and he might just have another one to Johnson. Braden Johnson will go down across the 10. His first catch went for 42 yards and six points. This one for 57. Mike Gundy told us last night they had to beat man to man coverage to have a chance in this ball game they knew a and m would crowd the line of scrimmage and he said we're going to take some shots we got a hit on the majority of them well two shots so far two completions and two big plays that's oklahoma state's 20th 50 yard play to lead the nation johnson's had a couple of them first and goal cowboys Drew Brown will keep it around the end. Nobody expects Drew Brown to keep the football, and he bolts into the end zone for an Oklahoma State score. Dialing, dialing it up at the right time, where everybody's thinking Chuba Hubbard. Show it, and he's got enough athletic ability and speed to get himself to the outside. And I mean, everybody crashes down inside thinking Chuba Hubbard and Drew Brown and waltz himself into the end zone and put Oklahoma State up 13 nothing his first rushing touchdown since 2017 with Hawaii now if you're Texas A&M Kevin you got to get this offense going you had a couple of third down opportunities to convert and it's gone nowhere and they, they've looked good running the football when they get Spiller coming downhill. They're playing against a fast defense that's used to playing teams that run laterally or try to get quick hitters outside on the edges. They can make tackles in the in the open space. You got to show this SEC kind of bravado right now and get this offensive line pushing and establishing the line of scrimmage right now. It's all Big 12 bravado for mulleted Mike Gundy and Jimbo Fisher is searching for answers early 174 yards nine plays on the last two Oklahoma State drives after Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M elected to punt from Cowboy territory on consecutive drives. Jake McClure to kick it away for the third time. And Smith calls for a fair catch. Coming up next, we'll cap off our bowl quadruple header. The nightcap is the Cheez-It Bowl from Chase Field. You couldn't ask for much more 
of a contrasting style game than Air Force uh -huh. and Washington State. Air Force and Air Raid. The Falcons will run it 85% of the time. The Cougars will throw it nearly that much. Time of possession will not matter in that game. <laughs> oh, Air no. Force going to try to chew it up, but Washington State can score at the snap of a finger. This might be the most sneaky fun game of all of bowl season. You and I were at the cheese at Bowl last year. Oh, nine turnovers in that game. Overtime. Nine interceptions in that game. Yeah. Might be 10-7 after three drives tonight. Quick hitter to Courtney Davis starts the fourth drive. And there's a flag throw in yeah, might the have secondary. A, an early block out in front by Kendrick Rogers, the big receiver. It's still early in the game. Go back to the running game. Holding offense number 13, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. It was Kendrick Rogers called for the hold. You, it's so early in the game, you don't have to abandon the game plan. Go back to Spiller. That's where they were having the success in, in running the football, and the offensive line was involved. And we are playing into the hands of Oklahoma State's defense. When you're out trying to toss it around the edges and plays it take a little while the balls in the air a little while and guys are rallying to the football making open field tackles. Now how much does first and 20 change that. Oh, nice little draw play here is what I would dial up. There you go Spiller on a first down. That was a good idea to the original line of scrimmage and then some for a game to 12. Now you're somewhat back on schedule. Second and long, you need a, a completion or it gets you into third, medium, third and short. But the entire playbook is right back open to you after, after that big holding penalty. Kellen Mond just 10 for 30, 92 yards and three interceptions to end the regular season in a loss to LSU. He's only put it in the air five times today. This will be a sixth, and it is complete. From first and 20 to a first down within two plays, the catch for Courtney Davis. Nice and well timed. Courtney Davis running a nice curl route. He pushes Spiller, pulls coverage out with his flare route, and in Mon delivering the football on time. And that's where they have to get him going, get him some footing in this game. Where he becomes a confident passer. Final play of the first quarter, perhaps. Perhaps we've already seen it. Texas AM will snap it from the 38 when we return. All Oklahoma State in the first quarter. Two big plays to Johnson and a touchdown run for Brown. The Cowboys lead by two scores. In Texas. Oklahoma State with a 14 nothing lead two long touchdown drives after one Cowboys looking to win their fourth consecutive bowl game Boy, this front tells me run the football the play instead is a pass it's a long one for mind into double coverage and incomplete I suppose and, and, double coverage on two receivers and that's that's why it's there because of only about five men in the box it's begging you to run the football at Texas A&M trying to throw into coverage you're out flag as well. Yeah, you're outmanned on the back end. And maybe somebody grabbed a jersey prior to the pass. The secondary holding. Yeah. Defense number eight. Ten yard penalty. Automatic first down. With Rodarius Williams, the corner. He's grabbing a handful of jersey of one of these. Actually, it's the speedy uh, Kendrick Rogers. Big physical receiver. Mm, Liffy. A lot of those are left alone, Kevin. <laughs> well, Williams has been banged for a couple of penalties now tonight. The pass interference earlier in the hold here. He may not love it, but the folks in maroon and white do. Running play for Spiller on first down. Yep. Isaiah Spiller cuts it outside for a gain of seven. This offensive line, a little up and down for AM this year, but they are big. They are the heaviest starting offensive line in AM history. They are known as the Maroon Goons, weighing nearly 1,600 pounds. Just how much is that? Well, it's one and a half grand pianos. 
It's four and a half male pandas end appropriately in this holiday season. It is four male reindeer. Not sure which of the reindeer would qualify. Dasher and Dancer might be a little I'm too skinny. I Rudolph doesn't qualify. No. <laughs> Not sure what Comet's workout regime is these days. Here's Spiller right through the Maroon Goons. For a first down, we go downstairs to Alyssa. Yeah, guys, my favorite stat in the Texas A&M notes about the Maroon Goons was each one averages out to about 318 points per pounds per goon excuse me ppg i'm gonna go with that but i like the comparison google told me about four and a half panda bears as well for reference and that's such a a, a cuddly looking animal that you wouldn't think well, and you you can just really count the guys in the box and whether or not they should throw a run here it just tells me run the football and they're gonna run it behind those four and a half pandas and anaya smith has a pretty good pickup on first down, a gain of six. To get them spread out like that, they have to respect the big receive receivers, Osmond, as well as Rogers and Davis. And so those, those they're a threat. Now, now, when you get the bodies out of the box, you just turn around and hand the football off. Smith is doing a nice job running between the tackles along with Spiller. It's really easy for Jet for Jimbo Fisher and Kellen Mond. Count bodies in the box. When they load the box, pick it up and throw it. If, it, if you out, you're outnumbered, or they're, you outnumber them in the box, go ahead and run the football. Second and four, they'll run it. Smith outside. He's got great speed, Anaya Smith. He has a first down to the 25. And they're from Fort Bend Dulles High School. I pay taxes in that area, so I know how good a football player he is nice quickness and speed and out running edge players trace ford and other true freshmen but smith is absolutely fast again with just one main running back available in isaiah spiller you knew a and m would have to get a little creative and they've done so with smith in the backfield featured heavily there for the first time this year Mod with an incomplete pass, a little too tall, and through the hands of Courtney Davis. Just a little bit off to start this game, and throwing the ball down the field is Kellen Mond. He's hit on a curl route, he's hit a couple of flare passes, a couple of check downs, but when the money plays are there, and I would consider that one a money play to Courtney Davis, those are the ones you have to hit. A&M need, they need points on this drive. Have to have points here. This is already their third trip into Oklahoma State territory. The first two ended with a punt. Back to the air on second down. And a short throw caught. It's been a busy first half for the Houston native Courtney Davis out of Langham Creek High School. This one a gain of six. Had Courtney Davis open. He was uncovered. The safety was at least 12 yards down the field. And McAllister comes up and makes a tackle, but not before a big, big gain. And sometimes it's that's that easy. Guys uncovered, give him the football and let him do some work in the open field. You sit, you diagram plays, you're trying to find ways to get guys open. If they give you one, <laughs> forget about blocking it up. Just take it. And there's Davis again in the slot, uncovered. Quarterback draw for Mond, nice. and Kevin Mond's got the first down. Nice call by Coach Fisher. That's spread out, and you got an athletic quarterback. Sometimes to get his footing in a game, he needs to do this, is pull the ball down and run the football. Just run it. Get it, take a hit, and then you settle in. One of four active Power Five quarterbacks with 7,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing. He is a more than capable runner. Seven rushing touchdowns on the year. Davis in motion on the first and ten. The handoff is to Spiller, who stumbles his way to the five. Just big boy football here. Even with the box loaded, Coach Fisher decides to run the football, and he's asking Dan Moore and Jared Hawker, the left tackle and left guard, respectively, to, hey, let's move some bodies, and we're going to turn around and put it on your shoulders. Get us into the end zone. Second straight play with a fullback. 
a lost art in football. Kagan Baldry lines up in front of Spiller. Oh, a bust exchange between Mond and Spiller. The ball on the turf. Oh, boy. A fiasco yeah. waiting to happen at the bottom of this pile. Well, A&M doesn't come up with this. You talk about a deflating moment, and they don't. It's Oklahoma State's ball. What a drive the Aggies had and were putting together. Amen. Ogbon Bamiga recovers the fumble. Yeah, you're right. Just a botched exchange. And I think it, I think it's the fullback, Caden Baldry, who actually catches the elbow and knocks it out. Devastation and deflation inside the red zone. Looked at replays during the break. It looked like Kagan Baldry's elbow grazed the ball on the exchange from Mond to Spiller, a lost fumble for AM. Well, I may take a shot here if I'm Oklahoma State. Instead, they'll run it with Brown, and yeah. Drew Brown slides down. Boy, big turnover like that. You got man to man coverage, and you got Johnson, who has had a couple of big catches already. He had, he's in man coverage over there working. Against the corner, Miles Jones might, might take a peek. At this point, are you taking a peek at Brayden Johnson every time there's man coverage? Oh, yeah. Especially with a safety inside the hash mark. And he's out there with that kind of speed. No, no doubt about it. He's got two grabs for 99 yards. Will he have a third? No. Brown going his way. The ball slightly underthrown with Jones in coverage. Love the idea. You're getting the man coverage that you want. You have to hit on those. And who's in position to make a play? Just a little fighting at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Miles Jones there in coverage. After the missed back shoulder, a third and five. Brown on the run, completes it right near the sticks. It's a first down. Dylan Stoner, the Cowboys' leading receiver since Tylen Wallace went down for the year, has a gain of six. Well, he has really stepped up in the absence of Wallace and knowing exactly where the first down marker is. You see him lunge for it there. Hey, what nice job there by that young man. Brown over the top again and too long as he had a chance for another deep shot to Johnson. It's just in. Mike Gundy's not going to stop throwing that one. And he's gonna he's gonna keep giving that opportunity to Drew Brown as well as as Braden Johnson because man-to-man -man coverage. He talked to us about it. We are going to take our shots. So that's not the last time you will see it. Another injured Texas A&M defensive lineman, Jaden Peavy, walks off as you look at Mike Gundy's resume. 14th straight bowl appearance and a record of nine and four in the first 13. He knows how to do it, doesn't he? When he gets to this point in the season, he knows how to get his team ready to play. Said he felt like they fell into this bowl practice schedule after his third ever bowl, the Holiday Bowl. They were worn down by Oregon. Seven and two in his last nine bowl games. Screenplay dropped by Hubbard, and maybe that was for the better. Third down coming up. Well, they had the big fella, Bobby Brown, breathing down the back of his jersey. This is Oklahoma State's bowl schedule. Talked to Mike Gundy yesterday about his success in bowl games. He said he thinks it's due to this schedule. Day one, they'll go shoulder pads and shorts, yeah. then a full pads practice, a special teams practice, and a day off, and they keep rotating yeah. that cycle. You know who likes that schedule more than anybody? The offensive line. Yes. They get two, two days <laughs> off. Special teams only, they're not practicing. Pat, a day off, that's the second day off for them. Offensive line doesn't like this. Brown is blown up and sacked. A loss of 11 yards on the play. Tyree Johnson gets his second. And now Texas A&M's offense has got to start rewarding the defensive unit, playing a lot of snaps. And again, it's Tyree Johnson getting to the quarterback. That young man having a heck of a night. But you got to start rewarding this, this type of performance by the defense. 
two times two turnovers two fumbles to be exact and they were able to get themselves off the field without even giving up a threat of points. Tom Hutton the Australian punter oh no. Oh no 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 for Oklahoma oh, State. Wow. Oh boy. Shank City USA off the left foot of Hutton. A punt of 17. Fantastic field position is upcoming for Texas A&M. Boy, you got to feel like if you're Jimbo Fisher and this coaching staff that you just caught one heck of a break. Your defense playing some complimentary football and then and holding Oklahoma State and then you're getting some excellent and I mean excellent field position to start this drive. And I wouldn't hesitate to go back to Mr. Spiller the true freshman right back to the offensive line and get right put this game right back in the trenches. Well the numbers for Spiller are fantastic. Texas A&M has moved it into Oklahoma State territory now for the fourth time. Two punts and a turnover in the first three. And Mon will look to throw. Smith. And Smith is taken down from behind with the first down, gain of 11. Well, he, he was tackled awkwardly. They were trying to get to a smash, smash route concept with Watermeyer going to the corner. And then Smith leaking out to the flat. And it's just a simple read for Kellen Mond. Spins it out there to Smith. And Texas A&M right back on the move. Good to see Smith hop up after that, that awkward tackle. Malcolm Rodriguez, Oklahoma State's leading tackler at the hit. Baldry returns at fullback for the first down. And here's Spiller. Diving across the tent. Boy, they are getting exactly, Kevin, what they want in terms of the push up front. Spiller's got some big, big holes to run through. There have been a couple of times down here inside the red zone here, that last play, and then dating back to the previous drive where he was one player away from going into the end zone untouched. Go back a few games for AM. They ran for 319 against South Carolina. The next week ran for negative one against Georgia. Much more the former than the latter so far tonight. Mond end zone incomplete. He had Smith wide open. I'll tell you what, it, Smith may have just mistimed it. Tried to climb the ladder a little bit too late, but those throws that aren't check downs, Kellen Mond just seems a little bit off. And it's the it's I can tell you exactly what it is. For a passer, it's the layoff. When you're not you can't replicate game speed and you sit for almost a month and come into a game, those are the ones that are hard to hit. What do you like here for Mond on third and six? Going back to Spiller, but uh, he is not in the game, so we're going to go, you know, maybe something up top with the trips route. Mon pressured, he'll get away from it inside the five toward the goal line, and Mon is down at the one. Yeah, I think he's going to have enough for the first down, and that fixes everything. That's the great equalizer for an offense, forcing a defense to play 11 on 11. And they'll snap it quickly to Mond. Diving toward the goal line, waiting for a signal. Not sure he got in, and what's the rush? What's the rush? You've had a couple of miss exchanges, you know, an exchange. Mess up. Why are you rushing to get to this one? Just go ahead and huddle up, make sure you got the right play call, and let Spiller get in the end zone. Review. It's going to be hard to tell with all those bodies exactly where the football was. And I, I think this one is going to stand. It's tough, tough to tell. How about the push that Oklahoma State got up front? 
Just can't, it. can't find the ball in there. Ogbog Mamiga over the top. See if Mon snuck it through this hullabaloo when we return to Houston. 14 nothing. Will it stay that way? You're looking at the champions of the annual Rodeo Bowl a few days ago. A tradition here, the Texas Bowl, Texas A&M, with a 4-3 win over Oklahoma State in seven rodeo competitions, ranging from barrel races to hay bale stacking. Call on the field stood on that last play. Mon short of the goal line, second and goal from inside the one. Mon will hand it off this time to Spiller. And Spiller is hit behind the line of scrimmage, but he does squirrel his way in for a touchdown. Jason Taylor got him, and Spiller has six for Texas A&M. Let me take a look at this one as well, but he ends up in the end zone. Not sure where that knee is. He, he indeed did get in. And the 10th touchdown of Isaiah Spiller's terrific freshman year is in the books. That was big Bobby Brown, a defensive lineman, who checked into the game with a heck of a block to, to give Spiller enough room to wedge himself in. Aggies have run it now for 105 yards, and again, this is with one scholarship true running back available. They have Connor Blumrick. A converted quarterback on the depth chart behind him. Spiller and Smith and Mond have done the work on the ground. And Texas A&M is finally on the board. 14-7, the Aggies finally strike across midfield. Matt, a needed win for that Michigan State program to finish above 500 this year. Big Ten over the ACC in New York. Not a bad, not a bad year for for Wake Forest. Not we started the year there against Utah State. Eight and five is pretty good for that program. And Dave Clawson continuing to grow in Winston Salem. Oklahoma State eight and four out of the Big Twelve. The Cowboys started the season unbeaten in the non-conference play. Lost three of their next four, but. Finished strong down the stretch in time for third in the Big 12 despite some key injuries. Spencer Sanders missed a couple of games and Tylen Wallace has missed the final five. The nation's leading rusher, Chuba Hubbard, as Oklahoma State finished strong for a 14th consecutive bowl appearance. In the last decade, as we close out the 2010s here, Andre, only 10 teams have a winning record every year in that decade. Oklahoma State's one of them. Yep, Oklahoma State and... The other side, Texas A&M, one of one out of there. <laughs> we we uh, get into trying to make a point. Chuba Hubbard is uh, is doing his thing, but two programs. That's why we felt like this would be a great matchup, and that since 05, both have had winning seasons every year. Hubbard a gain of eight. Hubbard dances away from two defenders in the backfield. Chuba Hubbard with the greatest two-yard run of the year. And it'll be third down and very short now. He is two yards away from hitting 2,000 even for the season. Well, the patience that he shows, almost kind of Le'Veon Bell-like, where he allows the offensive line to really kind of establish their blocks and then the speed he, in which he hits the hole. I mean, most guys that had possessed that kind of speed rush into the line of scrimmage. Spence. So, Great patience. Spencer Sanders in the game here for the first time on third down. And Sanders takes it around the edge for an Oklahoma State first down on his first touch. So we were told by Mike Gundy he had specific packages for the dual threat Sanders. And there's one package for a first down. It kind of felt like that's what it would be you know, after coming back from the injury. And you knew that they weren't they weren't going to throw the ball around with him a whole bunch with that thumb injury. It would be something in the running game. And he's shaking the right hand there with the thumb taped up. Here's Stoner on the pop pass. Dylan Stoner can only get back to the line of scrimmage. They were actually trying to run a counter with that play. They pulled Dylan Galloway from the left tackle back to the other side. 
And you saw Stoner trying to change direction. Yeah, I'll tell you what, pulling out everything in bowl season. There's Hubbard out of the backfield. Hubbard makes the first defender Hines miss, and then a great open field tackle is made behind the line of scrimmage. Jaden Peavy back into the game after an earlier injury gets Hubbard for the loss of one. And Mike Elko and his bunch making some excellent open field tackles. And AM really needing to get off the field here on third down so that they save some field position. Oklahoma State can't afford to make a mistake forcing the ball into coverage, trying to pick up third and 11. Look for something safe here from Drew, Drew Brown. Brown and a double coverage, and here comes a flat. Maybe a hold or something on the back end. Debian Renfro was in coverage. Flag came from near the AM sideline to the, the secondary. Pass. Holding defense number 29. 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. It was Renfro, and it is a first down, Oklahoma State. Boy, does that sting. Tough. As you get you fight all game to get to situations like that where you feel like you have the advantage defensively. Third down and 11, certainly the advantage for the defense. But he just grabs just enough. I'm not sure that that's a no call. Hmm. On first down, a handoff to Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard has 2,000 yards for the season and a whole host more. He's across the 40 of AM before Damani Richardson runs him out. A gain of 16 for Hubbard, who is over 2,000 here in 2019. Uh, the patience, Kevin, and the explosion the speed to go along with it when you possess the kind of physical skills that he has boy it makes him extremely dangerous just waiting for those blocks to set themselves and then boy does he hit it he is the 32nd player in FBS history to run for 2,000 in a single season and the second cowboy behind the man who had the best of those years Barry Sanders Drew Brown to throw it here with Hubbard out of the game down the field to Johnson incomplete got a right hand on it with Renfro in coverage a little bit late with the football was Drew Brown just a little bit late when you have a guy with the speed of Johnson and he also had LD Brown coming open on a crossing route that ball's got to be thrown way way early is that a good no call for you? Just hand fighting for the ball? Just let him play because Johnson was turning around. He's fighting for the ball, trying to fight for position. And Renfro's doing basically the same thing. Let him play football. L.D. Brown, the running back. Drew Brown trying to fool Texas A&M again. And Damani Richardson had none of that. A loss of seven. His fifth tackle of the game and his second tackle for a loss. Did not fool the safety and the true freshman, Damani Richardson. What a player he is going to be and has become under Mike Elko and this defensive staff. Now the 12th man is alive here in Houston. And you can't afford to make a mistake if you're Oklahoma State. Getting the ball first in the second half, you're trying to get out of here. Without giving AM timeout, Oklahoma gift. State. This is their first of the half. This is the full Mike Gundy timeout. takes his first timeout. We'll be right back to Houston with a third and long coming up. Playoff semis tomorrow. Joe Burrow and Jalen Hurts and the X Factors for Clemson as the Tigers get ready to face Ohio State. It's the handoff here. Something safe for Oklahoma State. And AM, I may take a quick timeout. To save myself some time. Brown's going to throw it to Hubbard. Shuba Hubbard. Maybe oh in the field goal range here. Oh Moore. Hubbard down to the 29. And he's a yard shy of a fourth down. So now what's the calculus? Well, you can ill afford to have that. I mean, you can, he's going to roll the dice and go for it here. And why not? Two timeouts. Can run the clock down a little bit. I'm not sure this is 
And after watching Amendola, it's not a gimme field goal on that first kick. Brown tried to draw the Aggies offside. He will burn some clock here. In motion, Jelani Woods. He's trying to get him to jump here. And Oklahoma State's going to use its second yeah. timeout. Trying to get a freebie, but they go ahead and roll it here and, and try to pick up this first down. Mention the college football playoff semis tomorrow. The New Year's Six starts tomorrow as well. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic from AT&T Stadium in Arlington here in the state of Texas. Memphis, the American Athletic Conference champions and the group of five representatives playing without their head coach Mike Norvell against number 10 Penn State. Eighth best offense in the country, seventh best defense. What a matchup this is going to be. Be a good one in the Cotton Bowl. I'm going to go ahead and send Amendola back out. His long for the year against Iowa State was 49 yards. Missed from 53. I'm a little surprised by this, Andre. This will be from 46. We'll see. 20 of 25 on the year. Amendola gets it up on the way. It is no good. So you leave AM with all three timeouts in 31 seconds, just trying to get a cheap possession here if you're Jimbo Fisher. A good snap, a good hole, it just hooks left on him. And I would be very, very aggressive with 31 seconds left. Knowing that Oklahoma State's going to get the football first out of the half, I'm going to push the ball down the field with Kel Kellen Mock. Remember, you have a few plays left before yeah. Trey Sterling. They're all Big 12 safety returns. He'll come back for the second half. Yeah, this is where you grow up as a quarterback right here if you're Kellen Mock. With a four receiver set, Mon gets rid of it in the face of pressure. And it's Cameron Buckley tackled in the open field. Jarek Bernard made the stop. Yeah, just looking for a drive starter, and with that not happening, you're going to go ahead and go into the locker room. You're just looking for anything positive to happen on that initial play. And AM doesn't even have to snap it now. And they won't, they'll go to the locker room. That's the end of the first half. Aggie fans don't like it. That's how the half ends. Oklahoma State in the first 14. Jimbo Fisher screwed the next seven. When we return, Matt Barry, Jesse Palmer, and Joey Galloway will take over for the halftime report. And welcome back to the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. Part of Capital One Bowl Mania. First half of perhaps missed opportunities, the best way to put it for both teams. Oklahoma State leads Texas A&M by seven in a game where both teams could reasonably make the case they should be up by multiple scores. Kevin Brown, Andre Ware, it, wasn't it an odd first 30 it, minutes? It really was, and it seemed like a long first half to go yeah. along with it, but uh, some mistakes back and forth on both side, both sidelines uh, led to the 14-7 score that we have. Texas A&M. Uh, turning the ball over early their defense able to to rally and hold Oklahoma State to no point they're driving to go in put the ball on the ground again and then it's it opened up or provided some opportunities for Oklahoma State to hit on some big plays which they talked about they had to have to get themselves in the end zone a couple of times Spiller bringing A&M back they're finally able to capitalize and get in the end zone and here we are at 14-7. A&M dominated possession in the first half, but Oklahoma State hit the two big plays. 99 yards on two catches for Braden Johnson, nearly half of the Oklahoma State total yards. Chuba Hubbard, the nation's leader in rushing, seven carries, 78 yards, more than 11 a pop. He's gone over 2,000 for the season. He is currently in 29th place all time in the NCAA single season record book. Just seemed like he didn't have a lot of opportunities to really get himself going. 
Oklahoma State will start with the ball as Alyssa Lang caught up with Texas A&M head coach Jimbo Fisher moments ago. Coach, offensively, what do you want to see in the second half? It's a consistent moving the ball. <clears throat> Just got to finish the drive down here. We executed a great drive at the end. We're moving the ball. We know what we got to do. Get our passes on third down, and we want to get our shot plays. We got to hit them. You guys came up with a couple big stops in the first half. How do you continue that defensively? Well, we got to do. We got and we got to get a post play. We give up a couple big ones, and our open field tackling's got to get better. But we had a critical stop there and a critical stop after the first turnover. So we're playing in spurts. It's got to play a little more consistent. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Oklahoma State starts with a pass play to Braden Johnson, his third catch to Monty Richardson on the stop for the Cowboys and a smart play call by Sean Gleason to come out and get Drew Brown you know right back implemented into this into this game a nice easy toss to build his confidence here for the second half I love it when offensive coordinators do that with a quarterback instead of coming in they turn around hand it off let him get himself reestablished in this game Brown making his third consecutive start after the injury to Spencer Sanders who has played one snap today and he nearly dropped it in beautifully here high degree of difficulty and Jordan McRae could not make the catch. Well, I don't know if you can throw it any better McRae just took a while before getting his head turned around and trying to figure out where the football was it, it you can't throw it any better if you're Drew Brown big target at six foot six. Cowboys go with tempo. Brown will air it out again on third and seven. And the ball was knocked down. It is incomplete. What a play on the back end by Damani Richardson, the true freshman. That was a catch by Braden Johnson. And he goes up and just continues to fight. He's trying to reel it in, Johnson. The hand swipe at the end was, is what made the play by Renfro. Excuse me, Richardson. And it would have been, Andre, a third big play yeah. for Johnson in the game. They gave up a couple early, and then now they've settled in on the back end, and that young man has had some football game. There is an injured Texas A&M player. It's Tyree Johnson who had the two sacks in the first half. A youngster out of Washington, D.C., St. John's High School is really... He really, really affected the first half of this game. Remember, AM is playing without Justin Matabike, their defensive MVP up front. DeMarvin Leal has returned to the game, as has Jaden Peavy, two defensive linemen who left momentarily with injuries in the first half. Now, Texas AM may have to deal with the loss of Tyree Johnson. And he's been pretty durable. He's started basically every game except with the exception of the, the South Carolina game. Good to, to see him pop up and make his way to the sideline. Two sacks today, four on the season. He is the leader among players currently on the roster with Matabike having declared early for the draft. He's a four-star recruit out of high school. 2018 made the SEC all-freshman team. So Oklahoma State will punt after its first three and out of the day. Another short kick by Tom Hutton. Another high and short kick. A fair catch made by Smith after a kick of only 33. This is exactly what Jimbo Fisher needed to have happen a stop coming out of the locker room and he mentioned that they've run the football with some consistency they just haven't finished drives well you get the first part of that equation is the stop now you get right back to to doing business offensively and for Oklahoma State you're looking to uh, to have some negative plays here if you can change field position you certainly want to do that if you're Mike Gundy and his bunch. Kellen Mond, 8 for 11, only 35 yards in the first half. Mond will run the option to start the second. And Mond gets taken down after a game of about a yard and a half. What do you think of Kellen Mond's first half? I thought he was a little inconsistent. He was able to hit the underneath stuff, but anything over 
eight yards, eight plus yards. It, it, he basically showed some rust of having not played uh, since November 30. And so uh, you want, you're hoping that the second half he can kind of find his footing and, and get himself going. Anaya Smith joins him in the backfield and now motions outright the linebacker Malcolm Rodriguez on him. And Mon looks that way and the pass is dropped by Smith. And some smoke on that one and Smith was coming inside. Those are ones that you want to just kind of touch in there and give your guy a chance to make a catch. That one is thrown with a lot of heat on the back shoulder of Anaya Smith. It's going to be a tough, tough, tough catch for him. Oklahoma State trying to play around with Kellen Mond, trick up the, the uh, pass protection here. Cowboys rush four, and Mond gets sacked. There's that negative play that we were talking about. Came in the form of Trace Ford as, as well as Mike Scott. There's a flag down. Not sure, maybe, maybe offsides here on Oklahoma State. Yes. So that's going to give Repeat the Aggies a free five and a redo on third down. Mark Kluzinski, our official, with the call. And now you need to convert. This is where you have to have it. So from a third and nine sack to a new lifeline on third and four. Mon with time and a wide open tight end Jalen Wondermeyer across the Oklahoma State 30. Down to the 26 again at 28. And a star in the making. Quarterback's best friend on third down is a tight end that has some speed, some range, and can reel it in. And this young man certainly can do it. He has had an outstanding season. 31 catches coming into the bowl game. Second team all SEC. Longest play of the game for Texas A&M. A two back set on first down and Mon will keep it on the option now a pitch to Smith Anaya Smith sets up first and goal as he hangs on the football down to the eighth Boy, the big third down conversion to Jalen Watermeyer has kind of got this drive going they were about to stall out a penalty he gave him another shot he comes up with a big play and I mentioned he's a Dickinson Gator mm -hmm. by chance he's same high school <laughs> I went to how about that. GATA baby young man's going to be a heck of a player so Texas A&M said it's two longest plays back to back Dickinson High School representing the nice Smith out of Sugar Land after that part of a host of Aggies from right around this Houston area their biggest alumni base is University first down Spiller trying to work it outside he does not tackle for loss made Pressure came from Rodriguez. Jason Taylor cleaned it up. The penetration there by Oklahoma State. And Taylor cleaning things up, but that last option play run to perfection by Kellen Mond. You keep it to the last possible second before you pitch it out. And Smith finishing up with a nice tough run. Execution here by Texas A&M has him on the move. That middle of the field right now is calling. Courtney Davis in the slot, one of these slots in the middle of the field. Mond, one on one coverage in the corner of the end zone, front corner, and incomplete. Osbin, the intended target, and Rodarius Williams in coverage. Coach Fisher may come back to that. Their play, they're sitting and giving you the inside of the inside of the field and you've got big targets Davis at 6 2 Osborne at 6 2 even Kendrick Rogers 
and Watermar is 6 5. Weidermeyer's slot left to the big catch on this drive. Mond, front of the end zone, touchdown! His roommate, Jamon Osmond, the Houston native, brings Texas A&M an extra point away from a tie. It all happened with the offsides penalty by Oklahoma State, breathed life into this Texas A&M offense, and we're talking about the middle of the field. It's a slant route. Run to perfection by Jamon Osmond, who gets inside position. 5th touchdown for Osmond, who grew up here in Houston. Sophomore year at Episcopal High School, junior year at St. Thomas before going to the IMG Academy. His fifth touchdown of the year, and Texas A&M can tie it. His roommates with Kellen Mon when they were at IMG together, mm -hmm. so you. There's no surprise that they have the chemistry together. Brought it right on the eight to Texas A&M. Both were Baylor commits before our Bryles was let go. They changed their commitment, came to A&M. 12th man happy to have him right now. A&M has tied it with two straight touchdowns, and we're all square in Houston. Why don't you say what you want from me? High school roommates, college roommates, quarterback, and wide receiver. The connection from Kellen Mond to Jamon Osmond has been fruitful the last four years from high school to college. And the Jew hookup for Osmond's eighth career touchdown, fifth of the year in Titus Academy Sports and Outdoors, Texas Bowl. We got a ball game, partner. Oklahoma State had the first 14. AM has responded. Braden Mann boots it away. And the Cowboys will start at their 25 as we look back with our Expedia drive recap. Kellen Mon goes deep right over the middle to Jalen Watermeyer. That got it started on the third down conversion. Ex excellent at executing the option, getting it to Smith in the open field, and then he throws an absolute dime low and inside. So Osmond or no one's going to catch it. His receiver comes up big and puts seven on the scoreboard, and we are tied at 14 apiece. Now the onus on Oklahoma State's offense. And the last drive, Kevin, that they had, they go three and out, and Chuba Hubbard has not touched the football. So I would imagine they are going to go heavy in his direction here to start, uh, start this drive. Got to get it to your playmaker. There is Hubbard. And Texas A&M was ready for it. Hubbard trying to reverse direction, and he just ends up losing an extra yard or two, minus five, to start this drive. Jeremiah Martin, with a big pause, turns him around. I mean, just grabbed a handful of jersey as it looked like Hubbard was going to redirect himself. And the big sophomore... On the, on the edge is one heck of a job. Only his eighth tackle of the year. Yeah, he is a pass rush specialist. They love putting him in in uh, passing situations. Had 30 sacks in high school. Brown with time, but nowhere to throw it. And now Brown will take off. And get taken down, Michael Clemens, the junior, after a gain of two, third and 13 coming up. Boy, it's like Jimbo Fisher. I'd love to have heard that locker room speech because his group has come out with a different flair about them than they did in the first half. I mean, the offense rewarding the defense's performance. They've gotten themselves off the field on a couple of drives and. Facing another three and out here, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Got to have something positive happen here. Delayed rush for Johnson. Brown airs it into single coverage incomplete. 
intended for Jordan McRae with strong coverage from Miles Jones. That's a great matchup. 6-6 six, six, matched against 6-4. Six, four. The 6-4 six, Miles Jones. So there's not a whole lot of height advantage. Excellent coverage. And then he goes up and both he and Renfro as well as Richardson, the guys in the secondary, fighting through the play. And it's like we got a flag on the tail First end of this. Foul. Chop block. Offense. Number 75 and number 30. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Marcus Keys and yeah. Juba Hubbard. Andre, since Oklahoma State's last score, the Cowboys have run 22 plays for just 46 yards. That's just over two yards per play. I know they want to complete shot plays. They're going to continue to take them. Right now, they've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of the area. Braden Johnson, who was, uh, was making the big plays on the end of those shots. Tom Hutton's first two punts went for just 25 yards per. Another high one, not a deep one though. The kick at 39. Still excellent field position to start this drive for Texas A&M. We'll see you on the. Players and coaches from both schools participated in the Depelchin Children's Center Museum scavenger hunt, one of the great events throughout the week at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. Both teams have raved about the hospitality in Houston all week long. Great matchup of old Big 12 rivals, charter members of the conference, meeting for the first time since 2011. Kellen Mond and Texas A&M back on offense on their own 39. And a handoff to Anaya Smith on first down as we go downstairs and check in with Alyssa. Yeah, guys, I think it's pretty important to note yet again, Oklahoma State's defense is without their starting safety, Colby Harville Peel. But he's definitely making his presence known, signaling in defensive play calls when guys come out, giving them notes, really coaching his guys up. He's in the middle of every huddle. It's like having another coach out there. Alyssa, it's a great point. That's an all Big 12 player in Colby Harville Peel who was hurt on literally the last play of the game in Bedlam against Oklahoma when OSU was down by 18. A freak injury that has kept him out. Mom's pass batted down to set up third down. Andre, we, we mentioned that off the top. Alyssa mentions it again here. How much have you noticed the loss of this young man, Colby Harville Field? Well, you, you certainly notice it on the back end, and you, anytime you're making plays and passes are being caught on the, on the third level of the defense, he's a guy that can clean all that up. And the pass said the third down catch by Jalen Wadamah was right in that area where he would have been playing. AM's biggest play of the game, that 28 yard catch last drive, led to a touchdown a few plays later. On third down, it's a quick swing to Davis. He has room to run and a first down. What a design there for Jimbo Fisher. Needed six and he got seven. Oh, and just a backbreaker for defensive coordinator Jim Knowles when you get to third down and you feel like hey it's an advantage for me let's just get off the field let's make a play and get off the field and you give up one of those boy that is that is kind of demor demoralizing it's been a couple of third down situations for Oklahoma State where they've had to stay on the field. Adams hit all three this half. Midway through this third quarter, they're skunking the Cowboys in the yardage department. Smith. Uh, Smith gets wow. hit hard, drilled in the backfield. It was Malcolm Rodriguez to clean it up. State wrestling champion, the guy that knows leverage, and he certainly showed it there against the true freshman, Watermeyer. Got up the field and made a heck of a tackle. Leads this team in tackling it with 94 coming in to the bowl game. And a game winning pick six against Iowa State earlier this season. You know about Mike Gundy, you know he loves those high school wrestlers. Yeah, and the, you know, the guys that know no leverage, yep. especially on the offensive and defensive line. A lot of good ones in the state of Oklahoma. Spiller, he's blown up again. 
a loss of a yard as a defensive line sandwich collapses. Trace Ford and the linebacker, Amen Ogbon Bamiga from behind. Uh, now for Jim Knowles, the message needs to be relayed. Here we are again on third down. We have to get off the field. Not just third down, but third down and especially long. Got to get off the field if you're Oklahoma State. Aggies need the Oklahoma State 40. They've been perfect on third down in the quarter. They will not remain it. Bond cleaned up by Ogbon Bamiga, and Oklahoma State will force a putt. Uh, the playmakers have to make plays. Rodriguez makes a play the previous one, and here. I've been beat by Bamiga. <laughs> that is a mouthful. He makes the play to clean it up on third down. <laughs> Think about that one for a little while. His partner. first name's Amen, so yes. that's, that's the shortcut. Also out of Alberta, Agbon Bamiga and Oklahoma State signed him the year before they added Chuba Hubbard out probably, of Alberta. Probably helped a little bit. Mm -hmm. Braden Mann, the all world punter. With a good one dropped inside the 15. 14 14 here in Texas. What a game we've got. It's a really fun look inside those four teams as they prepare for tomorrow's college football playoff semifinals. Be a little careful here if you're Oklahoma State with this field position. Six plays, zero yards to begin the second half. Chuba Hubbard gets maybe one yard here. Only the second carry in the second half for Chuba Hubbard. You mentioned it, the first one being a, a minus five yards. Barely got past the line of scrimmage there. So I guess the question would be is this too predictable for Oklahoma State or do you have to ride Hubbard anyway? Well, you got to ride him, but you got to formation yourself into being able to run the football with him. Only a five man box here. Hubbard will run it into that box. That's exactly right. He split four receivers out even the big tight ends Jelani Woods split out wide so you have to respect that if you're Texas A&M otherwise Drew Brown picks it up spins it out wide you get a couple of cheap yards that way so you widen out with the offensive formation it's going to make it a little bit easier to run the football and to block it up for the offensive line of Oklahoma State. Tyree Johnson by the way back in the game up front for Texas A&M on that last play at the ankle retake. He's out on this play for a third down and two. Same thing here, and I would expect Chuba to run the football. Instead, a block for Brown, a short throw. Nice. And it is caught by Landon Wolf for a first down. It's good work and a nice job by Wolf to find the marker and get his head around quickly. You realize you're getting some heat, or the quarterback's getting some heat. You see players disappear into the line of scrimmage. That spells blitz to you as a receiver. Cut my route off, but make sure I get to the down and distance mark. First first down since late in the first half. Another four receiver set and another run play to Hubbard. And he's hit immediately and dropped after a short game. Boy, I tell you what, the keys to this game, Jimbo Fisher told us, was to stop Chuba Hubbard. They have done an excellent job of that here in the second half. Another key was to limit the explosive plays. They had some success, Oklahoma State did, going down the field in the first half. It's been non existent here in the second half. They have held Hubbard to one yard per carry in this half. Flag is thrown at the snap. Brown will run out of bounds and will check the marker. Bryce Snyder is in the team and he had a handful of jersey of one of the defensive linemen, may have been Bobby Brown, chasing either he or DeMarvin Leal, chasing Drew Brown. He got away with it though. Offside defense number 40 lined up in the neutral zone five yard penalty repeat second down Tyree Wilson 
Offsides for AM. He's got to see the football, and he is going to get an earful from Terry Price, the defensive line coach. Just a little too close to that football. I call that an earful. It's Terry Price. He can coach him up. Hubbard. Third down and short coming up. Malcolm staying with the run. Just kind of forcing it a little bit. Sooner or later, you know that Chuba Hubbard will take those one yard gains, and then all of a sudden, he'll pop one where everybody on the second and third level of the defense is giving chase to number 30. Spencer Sanders back in. This is his second snap. The first one was on a third and short. He ran for a first down. Their regular starter has missed time with a thumb injury. He'll hand it off to Hubbard with a backfield stumble. And Chuba is marked short of the line to gain. It looked like one of the offensive linemen pulling from left to right got in the way of Chuba Hubbard. He saw something early. May have been the tight end. It was. It was. It was Logan Carter trying to pull in front of Chuber, Chuber, and uh, and got in his way and just forced. It just stopped his momentum. And once again, Oklahoma State punting the football back to a dangerous, dangerous return man. This is by far Hutton's best putt of the day. It is a dandy. Down to the 15 and a fair catch after a putt of 52. How about it? Hey, tomorrow night, it's time. The college football playoff semifinals on ESPN and the ESPN app. Four Eastern, three Central. Joe Burrow and Jalen Hurts, one and two in the Heisman. Face off LSU, Oklahoma, in the Chick fil A Peach Bowl. And Ohio State and Clemson in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. What a season for Joe Burrow. The largest margin of victory in Heisman Trophy history. 4,700 yards, 48 touchdown passes. And he has changed the way they will play football on offense at LSU going forward. Now every receiver will want to get in, involved in that. They already were putting yes. out big time receivers. It'll be hard to recruit them now. Isaiah Spiller, another tackle made by Ogbon Bamiga. His ninth of the game. I think both teams defensively doing a, an excellent job. It's, it's like who's going to flinch first. And up doesn't have to snap it. out and get to the fourth quarter oh they snapped it in time wow maybe they shouldn't have Vaughn did he throw it away yes he did get it away before he hit the ground the pressure came from Ogbon Bamigo who's turning this side That's of the, the field of the into the amen corner 14 14 in the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl thanks for the courtesy laugh we got a heck of a game on our heads Fourth quarter coming up from Houston. Back to Houston where that last play of the quarter for Texas A&M could have gone a couple of different ways. It was a rule on the field that A&M got the playoff and it was an incompletion. But let's watch this. First of all, here's the game clock. So the play, basically the ball wasn't snapped. We should be into the fourth quarter. Right, but so that play shouldn't have happened. But then watch this. Does Kellen Mond get the ball off? No, his knee is down. Yeah. So, and Amon Agbon Bamiga is going to get credit for a sack on Kellen Mon. It's going to be moved all the way back to the eight yard line. I mean, this is a huge. Yeah, and, and, I'm, and we were wondering why rush the play? You know, why snap the football? Just get into the fourth quarter and get the correct play call. Certainly, a big play for Oklahoma State. Could have been second and ten because they didn't seem to get it off in time. Instead, third and sixteen, and Mon will just 
get to the line of scrimmage if that on a draw play. Well, these defenses are playing some football. Jaden Jernigan blew it up there. It's actually a loss of two. Plays a significant role in the rotation up front for Oklahoma State coming in for Tyler Lacey. And they're getting tremendous penetration up front by Oklahoma State on this drive. The sack, another negative play. They're going to have some pretty good field position to start this drive, Kevin. Let's see if last year's Ray Guy award winner, Braden Mann, can punt AM out of this sticky situation. No, well, not yet. Before the ball was snapped, false start, offense number nine, the penalized half the distance to the goal, remains fourth down. You gotta press the reset button if you're Jimbo Fisher. And if I'm Oklahoma State, I might come after this. And he is at the very, very back of the end zone. Heels almost touching out of bounds. And gets it away cleanly. Line drive kick. Dylan Stoner got out of the way. And this will be good field position for Oklahoma State. Kick of 50, though. It was a good one by man, about as well as you can do under the circumstances. Bowl season rolls on tomorrow, noon Eastern, 11 Central. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic from AT&T Stadium, Memphis, and Penn State. The group of five represented the Memphis Tigers, one loss out of the American Conference and Penn State, an at-large selection. Another fantastic year for James Franklin out of the Big Ten. He has done an outstanding job with that program as a whole. Mike Norvell, Florida State's head coach. Greener pastures in yeah. one sense of the word. Got some work to do. Cuba Hubbard with a good first down carry. That's the carry that Oklahoma State's been looking for here in the second half. And that's the toughness in which he can run with. Even as a back known for his speed, he runs with tremendous toughness. 6'1", about 210 pounds. Can run between the tackles, and we know you give him a crease, forget about it. Came to Oklahoma State at 180. Out of Sherwood Park, Alberta, Canada's Cowboy. Harvard has it around the edge, and he is out of bounds with enough for the first down. And it felt like at some point you got to just put it back in his hands. You're struggling offensively. You need to feed Chuba Hubbard and let him get himself started. This time Brown looks to throw. He looks long. He goes long again, and it's incomplete. Tipped away by Charles Oliver, one of the all-time pass breakup leaders at Texas A&M. Boy, if you're Landon Wolf, you're a receiver. You can't redirect yourself on a route. Now the ball is getting ready to be thrown, and then all of a sudden you see a receiver take a different, different angle on a route. I'm wanting to throw him towards the sideline, away from coverage. He kind of starts to leak towards the end zone. It's a redirect, and that one's going to be incomplete. He's lucky that he didn't throw, lead, him, lead his quarterback into an interception. Pressure comes, and Brown gets blasted. Debian Renfro, the corner off the edge for a major loss. Minus nine on the play. The story of this second half has been the defensive units for both teams. And Michael Clemens gets up the field. Tremendous penetration along with Devion Renfro. Tell hey, you what, they're playing some ball. Third and 19. Incomplete intended for Wolf. One thing I know is defenses feed off big plays. And here in the second half, the Aggies have created some big plays along with Oklahoma State's defense. They've com com created some big plays. Just settle in, partner. We're, we got a long ride ahead. 17 plays in the second half for Oklahoma State for 22 yards. AM has been stalwart.
Tom Hutton try to hold this great field position. Smith does not call for the fair catch. And Anaya Smith went forward and then went backward. And he's down after a return of two yards, a kick of 42. 12-13 to go in the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. It's anybody's ball game. It's the 28th meeting between Texas A&M and Oklahoma State, but the first in eight years. What a game this was, September of 2011. Ryan Tannehill and Brandon Whedon, two top eight and unbeaten teams. Whedon and the Cowboys down 20 to three at the half. Storm back in the second for a 30 to 29 win. And just two days later, Texas A&M officially announced its entrance into the SEC. They have not played since. I watched that game this morning. You talk about some names that played in that game. I'll get into that after this play. Kellen Mond on a design run. Wow. Mond bursts free for a first down on the Oklahoma State sideline. Brandon Whedon played in that game in 2011. Ryan Tannehill had some some pretty talented players. Christian Michael and Cyrus Gray were the running backs in that game. Justin Blackman for Oklahoma State. They were both ranked in the top 10. Oklahoma State was seven. A&M was eight. A lot of talent on those rosters. Mike Gundy said after that game, our team was in better physical condition by a long shot. And it was the beginning of the end of the Mike Sherman era in College Station. A couple of coaches later, it's year two of the Jimbo Fisher era. Isaiah Spiller sheds a tackle in the backfield. And Spiller has a good first down run of five. Ogbong Bamiga with his 11th tackle of the game. Mike Sherman had put together one heck of a roster. You start to look at the success right after. You know, Johnny Manziel was you know, their Heisman winner the next year. All that was brought in. The offensive linemen that were being drafted in the first round, Mike Sherman did that and deserves a, a heck of a lot of credit. Mon will run the option on second down. Mon keeps it. First down and more. Running away from Cowboy defenders. Wow. Kellen Mond is in the clear and in the end zone. 67 breathtaking yards. The block by Jamon Osmond on Rodarius Williams is what frees up Kellen Mond. An excellent block on the edge. Didn't allow Williams to get back into the play. And Kellen Mond, the great equalizer, athletic quarterback that can force a defense to play 11 on 11. His longest run of the season was 36. It no longer is. Texas A&M has its first lead of the game. Annual bull bash last night at the Rustic. Oklahoma State and Texas A&M chance to find out who has the best fans in college football. Oklahoma State had the most fans in attendance at the Rustic last night. Both teams well represented tonight. 68,415 at Cramden NRG Stadium. And they've seen Texas A&M score 21 in a row to take the lead. Kellen Mond, a 67-yard touchdown run. He's thrown for one as well. Now the Aggies will return on defense where they've been sensational since the first. Oh, Johnson bring it out and got out of the end zone. Big mistake made and a flag thrown to add. Oh, no. What a mistake for Brady Johnson who toe tapped over the line. Illegal block in the back. Return team number 23. And the penalized the half the distance a, to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. With that penalty, field position getting worse for Oklahoma State, but they are very much plenty of time left in this game. That eliminates some mistakes. This being one, stay in the end zone. The ball comes out to the 25. Now you got to run it out. 
If you're Mike Gundy, you got to tell your group, hey, don't panic. We're very much in this ball game. Block in the back and they start this one from their own about the three yard line. Third time they start inside their own five in the game. In the first half, the Cowboys started a drive from the three, went 97 yards for a touchdown. They start this one with a good play, a run to Brown, who gets on his fanny near the 15 for a first down run. An excellent play call by Sean Gleason, the offensive coordinator, because everybody in the building thought Juba Hubbard was getting the football. They went crashing down inside, and Drew Brown with a nice keeper. 12 yards, longest play of the half. Brown, and that's fired into the sideline. Braden Johnson was in the area. I think it was just time. That clock inside a quarterback's head's going off. A quick three-step drop, nothing's there. I need to get rid of the football. Smart play by Drew Brown. Here's Hubbard, got a block from Johnson oh down the sideline. What a cutback by Chuba Hubbard, who somehow managed to stay in bounds and burst into AM territory for 42. It's the exact formation that they had. Two stacks on the outside, getting AM to spread itself out, and they gave it right back. Exactly what they did earlier in the ballgame. Gave it to Chuba Hubbard. Big, big play on the out on the edges. And it's his 11th consecutive 100 yard game. A buck 37 for the nation's leading rusher. Brown, that pass was deflected and nearly caught, but McCray couldn't come up with it. Looked like it wobbled coming across the line. You need about half of this here if you're Oklahoma State. That's what you're thinking. Brown pressured. Brown set. Initially, Jaden Peavy, DeMarvin Leal on the back end of it. Well, Leal, as well as Peavy, reestablished the line of scrimmage, and it's about four yards deep. I'm not sure who whiffed. I think it was Johnny Wilson, the center, whiffed on Peavy and just gave him a nice alleyway right into the quarterback's lap. Now they have created and continue to create negative plays at just the right time with this this A&M defense. Set up the screen for McCray. He is very close. Needed the 33. He's a yard short. You'd assume this is go for a territory for Mike Gundy. I think so. You get down close to eight and a half minutes. You got one of the nation's best at his position in terms of Chuba Hubbard at running back. Short yardage situation. If you're going to rely and you believe in him, this is the time to do it. And Spencer Sanders is going to come in for this fourth and one play. And the play clock's running. We're already down to about 15, down close to 10 seconds, and they're still substituting. And yeah, AM's getting bodies on and off the field. And they're going to be allowed an opportunity to substitute. And not snap the ball. Not to take a timeout. Down to one. Sanders. He got it off. And Spencer Sanders is hit shy of the line to gain. AM holds up. Maybe Oklahoma State should have taken that timeout as Sanders comes up a yard short. DeMarvin Leal and Keldrick Carper made the play for Texas AM. Great penetration on the part of Texas A&M. Leal again making one heck of a play. Delivery brought to you by Chipotle. This clutch stop for A&M, though, a baffling sequence on fourth down for Oklahoma yeah, State. Rush themselves into a play. You take the ball out of your best player's hands, which is Chuba Hubbard. I think had Spencer Sanders given it to Chuba, he may still be running. I mean, nobody went with him. They were thinking short yardage. Just the whole sequence was bad from the start for Oklahoma State. The substitutions, the play clock, all of it. 
And a turnover on downs leads to Texas A&M possession. Isaiah Spiller into the pile for a yard. Oklahoma State fans may be looking right now at this game, at the situation, and saying with 8.6 yards per carry, why does Chuba Hubbard only have 16 carries in the game? Is that a fair question to ask? Well, there's certainly a couple of short yardage situations where he needs he, how to put the ball in his hands. You know, he's my best offensive threat. He's the most consistent player on offense that we have. Let's give him a chance to uh, to pick up a yard and move the chains. See if the Cowboys defense can pick up their offense. Give the nation's leading rusher another chance. Kevin Mond with a first down throw to Courtney Davis. And Davis with a few yards extra to midfield for 15. Oh, excellent throw by Kellen Mond, and he's kind of gotten his footing. He's throwing the ball well here in the second half of this one. Thirteen for nineteen passing with a sixty seven yard touchdown run to end last drive. And that ability is what made him the number two dual threat quarterback coming out of high school. Mod will keep it here and he shows that ability again. Is he going to do it again. No. Tracked down late by Trey Sterling who has reentered for the second half. After a gain of 30 yards. Sometimes that's just what it takes is let him carry it. And he did early in the second half, gave him a couple of option plays, and that really got him playing football again. Been away from it since November 30th. I know practices and all that, but you just can't simulate games. You're, you're kind of out of rhythm. Took a couple of runs to get Kellen Mond back in rhythm, and he's playing some pretty good football right now. He's run for 100 yards this half alone. Seven for 105. Here's a nifty run by Anaya Smith. Smith has about nine and a half. The main thing here, if you're Texas A&M, take care of the football. If you're Oklahoma State, you're trying to hold just to a field goal attempt. First order of business for Jimbo Fisher in this offense is to take care of the ball. Oklahoma State trying to paw it out. Create a turnover if you can. Fullback Baldry in the game. Osmond motions tight into the formation. And Spiller takes it for a first down. First and goal from the nine coming up. Well, we are getting ever so late. The ball game down close to five minutes. Jimbo Fisher, you, you've got a, a golden opportunity here to make it a, a two score game. First order of business, though, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, take care of the ball. Late clock down to five. Oklahoma State will snap it there with Spiller. Spiller breaks free, and Sterling maybe saved another touchdown. That's a heck of a play by Trey Sterling. He has really, really come on this season for their secondary. And came into the game with 65 tackles, saved a touchdown run by Kellen Mon a few plays ago, and there saving another one. Isaiah Spiller. Clock's going to move under four minutes. Oklahoma State still has all three timeouts. There's a run with Spiller again. Hit from behind. It looks like Dan Moore, the offensive lineman. A&M a little slow to get up. Actually, it's the true freshman. Timeout for an injury. Kenton Green. Right guard on that young offensive line. Jimbo Fisher told us he thinks Kenyon Green may be a first yeah. round pick someday.
Fans, right after this game, tune in to the ESPN app. We'll have the post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following here at Houston. Texas A&M in its third ever Academy Sports and Outdoors. Texas Bowl, Oklahoma State in its first appearance in this game. A&M looking to go to 2-0 in bowls under Jimbo Fisher. Oklahoma State looking to win its fourth consecutive bowl under Mike Gundy. Two coaches with a lot of postseason success. And Coach Gundy is needing that football back right about now. On, we'll wait to snap it. And now there's some movement on the line. Yeah, you hold those big grunts in that long. They are bound to jump, which is exactly what happened with Ball Carson started. Green. Offense number 54. Five yard penalty remains third down. Well, good news for AM is even if they don't get anything here, this is still a chip shot field goal for a two score lead. That's a little bit harder after that flag. We run left here to get this ball back in the, the center of the field. Other good news, it actually kills a little, a little more time. Yeah. Game clock continues to wind with a play clock back up to 25. And Mon will just turn and hand it off to Spiller. Ogbon Bamiga takes him down across the 10. See if Mike Gundy uses a timeout yet. Did signal for one. He did signal for it, yes. Maybe a few more seconds on that clock when we return. Timeout Cowboys before a field goal try. M can extend the lead to two scores. A chip shot for Seth Small, a 24 yard kick for the sophomore, 17 for 22 on the year. All the mechanics have to be in place the snap, the hole, and of course the follow through. And Seth Small has got to hit it right. Oklahoma State, one of the best kick blocking teams in the country under Mike Gundy. And they don't get this one as Small drills it through for a 10 point Aggie lead. Going to make it tough for Oklahoma State, but still enough time. 252, you have two timeouts. Enough time to get right back in this thing and make it a game. Tall hill to climb, but not impossible. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities, all state will make a contribution to that university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, all states. 24 yard field goal. 24 unanswered points for Texas A&M since Mike Gundy's Cowboys had a two touchdown lead early in the game. You always wonder which team is going to get the bold bunt heading out of one year to the next. There's always at least one that was Texas in the Sugar Bowl last year. And if A&M hangs on, you can see the stories right themselves. Yeah. Youngest team in the nation, four seniors, another great recruiting class, yeah. easier schedule next year. True or not, I wonder if this can be some positive momentum into 2020. If the Aggies hang on, that's oh, a tall boy. order, though. Braden Johnson, an excellent return for Oklahoma State. He's out near his team's own 40. He didn't hesitate to bring that one out. <laughs> Tonight, after the Cheese It Bowl, Linda Cohn, Neil Everett bring you Sports Center from Los Angeles. Previews, predictions, and best bets in advance of tomorrow's college football playoff semifinals. A conversation with Coach O. It's Clyde Edwards Alaire going to play for LSU. That's in question. And reports from the Cowboys and Eagles as they prepare to decide the NFC East in Week 17. Sports Center tonight on ESPN and the ESPN app. Drew Brown is just seven of his last 18 for Oklahoma State, and he'll stick it in the belly of Chuba Hubbard here. Generally speaking, a wise decision. Hubbard goes down after a dozen yards. He has 149 in the game. All right. Just a smart player. Realizes the clock's going to stop until the chains move. 
Hubbard now in the top 20 all time for a single season rushing yards in FBS history. And this is Jordan McRae who gets out of bounds. We love his running style. It's just kind of you know, the patient he sh patience he shows and then the explosion as we mentioned earlier to go along with it allowing blocks to set themselves. He makes it tough on defenders. Clock is moving. Whether Brown knows it or not. Starts in a delayed fashion after the out of bounds. Brown to the sideline. Jelani Woods, the cowboy back, and he's pushed out with an Oklahoma State first down at 155. Well, he is a good looking player. Just a red shirt sophomore. Came in with 15 catches. Coach Gundy said, hey, we probably should throw him the ball a little bit more. He's a heck of an athlete. Next year, he's he's going to get a lot thrown, a lot more thrown his way. Brown loads up, has a wide open Johnson in the middle of the field. First down to the 19, a gain of 17. This might be what they needed a long time ago to start the second half. So no huddle, take the thinking out of it for Drew hit, Drew Brown as well as the rest of the offense, and just go play. It's the best looking drive that Oklahoma State's had here in the second half. Hubbard takes it, made one defender miss. Look at the hard running from Chuba Hubbard trying to push his way with help from his teammates to the first down, and there's a flag thrown at the end. I'm sure, they're looking at one of the A&M players. Leon O'Neill, I'm not sure. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 92. 92. Penalize so half the distance Dave to the ball. Automatic first down. Well, 160 yards, Hubbard has just about hit his average. Well, we said it was a steep hill, but not impossible to climb. That was on 32, I think, not 92, Andre White. So first and goal, Hubbard, and down he goes. I call the timeout here. You can run it, but you've got to spin the timeout, and Coach Gundy does exactly that. And what that means for Oklahoma State is you have to score, then you have to get an onside kick with only one timeout left, but Mike Gundy really had no choice on that play. Nine tackles for loss for Texas A&M tonight. Bet most of that came in the second half of this ball game. They were flying up the field and playing with their hair on fire. Had a pretty strong season for Mike Elko, the second year defensive coordinator in his Texas A&M team. We asked him during the week about year two and the progression defensively for Texas A&M. He said in some ways it almost felt like it was a redo of year one. They had so many players without game experience yeah. and they have saved maybe their best football for the last game. It's a young whippersnappers. Brown on second down, off play action. Everyone's covered up, and he has to throw it away. Texas A&M was not fooled by that. And Jeremiah Martin working against one of the tight ends is not going to allow Jelani Woods to get himself open. He pretended to block and hold him inside, and then released, and the big defensive end was stride for stride with a 6'7 tight end. Stoner, McCray, and Johnson, the receiver is left to right. And Jimbo Fisher sprinting out of the field, trying to get a timeout, and now he will get the timeout signaled in late. Yeah, I don't want it, but <laughs> unfortunately, they're going to give it to him, so there will be a the redo, redo on third down. Texas A&M takes its first timeout of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. 
And when Stoner came wide open, Drew Brown just overthrew him. Please reset the game anyway, clock to 105. 105. Ooh. I'd like to see Jimbo's 40-yard metrics on that one. That was some hot footing from Coach. Do you agree this is the best drive of the second half for Oklahoma State? I don't know what's close. That's the sad thing to say for that. No doubt. And, and it's because they had them, they've been forced to go no huddle. Got to go score quickly. And this is the best best movement of the football Thank they've you. had in, in a long time in this game. Why did teams wait so long to go no huddle? You got me. I don't know that I huddled much, so I don't know what a huddle <laughs> was. That's the reverse of that. We didn't huddle a whole lot. Well, they had four first downs all half Oklahoma State, and they've added four on this drive alone. Especially when A&M's having the type of success they're having defensively, you need to dictate to the defense. And by going no huddle, you don't allow them to line up in exotic glitches and trick you. you you're pushing the gas against them. Brown on the slant to Johnson, and it's a touchdown. His second of the game. And Jimbo would like to have that timeout back. Plenty of time for Oklahoma State. And what a throw. Low and inside to Braden Johnson in Oklahoma State within four, waiting the extra point here. What a game for Braden Johnson. Had a career high four catches, 77 yards in Bedlam. He's bettered both of those marks tonight, five for 124. It is a three point game, and Oklahoma State will need a successful onside kick. Tomorrow, ABC and the ESPN app bring you the Camping World Bowl from Orlando at noon Eastern. It is the first ever meeting between Notre Dame and Iowa State, an intriguing quarterback matchup. Ian Book for the Irish and Brock Purdy for the Cyclones. Third straight 10 win season for the Fighting Irish, and they face one of the great young signal callers in the nation in Brock Purdy. See there, over 300 yards passing per game, fifth most in the FBS. Another good matchup. Good football oh on the ball. Gosh. Hope you did your I might have chores to, today. I might, yeah, I might not go to the tomorrow. I might not go to the golf course tomorrow. <laughs> I might have to stay in and uh, let this chill out and watch, watch the football. Texas A&M 14 becomes 97. All right, Texas A&M 14. That's either Buckley or Carper has changed to 97. All right, onside kick time for Jake McClure. Yeah, got to execute this one. Got to have it. Got to travel 10 yards, too, and Jimbo Fisher will use his second timeout. I yeah, wanted to check out the formation timeout. that Oklahoma Texas State's going to line up in to try to this execute this and then get the right personnel and guys with the best hands on that side. Remember Texas A&M this season it's been a tale of really two parts of the schedule seven and oh against unranked teams all seven wins against teams with a losing or 500 record the five losses all the teams ranked in the top eight at the time wow including three AP number ones coming in you just didn't know who they were what, what team is it and I think they've shown you some resiliency they've shown that they that this game mattered Jake McClure's onside kick knocked down by a Texas A&M player. Looked like the Aggies got on top of it, though. We'll wait for an official word, and there it is. Heard it pretty early. Texas A&M football. Don't want to get too chippy here at the end of the game. And the Aggies have it. And they have win number eight within their grasp. Boy, it looked like Smith is going to put it out there for Oklahoma State to have a chance to get back on get on it. I'm not sure who actually recovered it. 
It was Isaiah Spiller officially. And it'll be two kneel downs for a second straight bull win for Jimbo Fisher. It's always my favorite formation. Because at that point, you know you're taking care of business. Kellen Mond will take the knee. What a second half for him. Kellen Mond, our Capital One player of the game tonight. In the second half alone, he ran for 105, including a 67-yard touchdown. And he threw for 60 yards. Altogether, more than 200 yards of offense. And for the 15th time in his career, he throws and runs for a touchdown in the same game. And it's Gatorade time, just about for Jimbo Fisher. Another step forward for Texas A&M. What a crowd they had. Kyle Field South. That was the challenge. <laughs> and the Aggies got the Gatorade That's the band. challenge. <laughs> What a great feeling for Texas A&M in a season that was filled with frustration against top opponents. They beat a very good Oklahoma State yeah. team, 24-21, and they win the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. What a great ball game by both both teams, obviously with Texas A&M coming out on top, but Mike Gundy has nothing to be ashamed of, and his bunch played very, very well this tonight. Played well this year. Pretty young team themselves, Oklahoma State. Let's send it down to Alyssa Lang with a winning coach. coach. Coach, you're a little wet. How does it feel? Yeah, it feels really good. That was a hard fought game. And the way to finish this season, I, I wouldn't expect anything else from this team. This team fought hard. We didn't reach all of our goals. And we lost some tough games that we expected to win. But the way they kept battling, getting better each and every day, that's it's a way to culminate the season. How about the way your quarterback played in the second half? That was big time. We struggled the first half with turnovers and give, you know, had to move the ball, and I said it. He made big time plays, big time situations, and we blocked well up front. Everybody's a total team effort. Defense played great too. What does this win mean to cap off the season you guys I, have? I think, again, sends another message. We know how to keep preparing for bowl games for the future of bigger games in which we have to play. But we never quit. And Aggies always got pride more pie. Texas A&M, baby, have that pride. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Melissa, thank you. Jimbo Fisher is 7-2 in postseason games as a head coach. 1-0 in 2019. The Aggies win the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl over Oklahoma State. Does it for our entire outstanding crew here. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to all of you out there. For Alyssa Lang, Andre Ware, and the rest of our crew, I'm Kevin Brown saying so long from Houston. Post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One coming up on the ESPN app. For now, we get you to Glendale, Arizona. Kevin DeGandhi and crew are out west. Guys.